back. You hear so many different voices on the television these days, Australian, Americans. It's great when you get a Welsh voice coming out of the tube. One such voice is Sean Lloyd, and the great thing is she manages to smile whatever the weather. Will you please welcome Sean Lloyd? <laughs> you can put your elbows on the table, man won't mind. It's very tall, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. Bit of an odd shape. Anyway, it's lovely to have you here. Busy day, two live programs. Very busy day, yes, yeah, my second one. But my goodness, the look of this. Oh, Pearl, it's a bit it? posh. It is. I've really tarted myself up for this one. Now then, just a couple of things. We mentioned earlier on that there's a deep depression over you because of your music. What happened? Oh, God, yeah, low pressure indeed. I had all my music collection, every single CD I owned, nicked. We got thieves a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they stole my whole record collection. I've got nothing at the moment. <laughs> but you are, I Thank mean, you. <laughs> you are a music fan, that's the whole... Oh, I'm a music freak, I, I am. You know, I asked around that, and I said, what do you think Sean Lloyd would like? And people said, Abba. Maybe the sound oh, of music. Oh, thanks. But the you. type of music you listen what, to. What weather girly music? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. No, I like uh, JJ Kale, John Kale, Ry Cooter, Tom Waits. Love Tom Waits. That sort of thing. That's real gravel. Because <laughs> underneath it, I know that people get this impression that you, you know, you're very glam on the telly, and that's that's great. But that's that's the job you do. You weren't like that originally. You were a journalist, a hard-nosed journalist. Mm -hmm. In real life, yeah, in real life, there's a brain ticking away underneath there somewhere, yeah. So how, I mean, did you, were you interested in the weather at all? Yeah, in so much as I'm interested in music, and let's face it, uh, music is full of weather references. Yeah. I mean, don't yeah. let the sun go down on me, you are the sunshine in my life, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. White so Christmas. it was there, but not at the forefront of your mind. Of yeah, no, I was career. always interested in weather, I think, because I'm interested in clothes. And as a yeah. result, by default, it's almost. I mean, if I had an expensive new suede jacket, I wanted to know whether it was going to rain the next day or not. And it's interesting you to say that, because my sister lives in France, and we spend, talk to one another maybe twice a week, and the first ten minutes of that conversation is comparing weather in this country oh. with France. Because yeah. the, the best weathermen I know are actually the surfers who live on the Gower. Because uh, they can tell you when there's a depression out, out west, because they know that's the best time for the surf. Yeah. So I, I suppose people close to land know about it as well. Going back to your journalistic training because it was through that that you got the job as the weather That's right, as the yeah. weather girl or presenter why not yeah so you <laughs> all right so what was the job you had in in london because you worked in wales originally and moved to london yeah it was journalism tv journalism um i worked for worldwide tv news the tv news agency you know john mccarthy's lot oh, was right. taken hostage right, right up. yeah and uh, basically i broadcast throughout the world but not in this country i was like a stringer for abc in the states channel 9 australia so I'd go out and about, I'd go to Regent's Park, do a story on London Zoo, possibly closing down, but for other countries, not for our own. Well, I mean, that's a great training, isn't it? I mean, and I, I, I suppose, is. how did the weather girl thing come out? So I keep on saying weather girl, <laughs> and it's not meant as an insult, but that's, that's what people call you now. Yeah. How did that come about then? It's not well, natural progression. It isn't, it isn't. But at the time, I got to work on a half-hour program on dramatic weather, gales and hurricanes and water spouts for the Met Office, they came to us. Right. And now, uh, the age-old thing of being in the right place at the right time, they just happened to be screen testing for the national weather. Right. And they dragged me screaming and kicking to a studio, much like this, to do a screen test. Um, and I think I was the only one who could stagger through three minutes without drying up, so I got Experience. the job. <laughs> yeah. Are you pleased you've got the job? Is it because yeah. it, it's, it must change your life. Listen, I saw you in the sun this week. I've seen you. <laughs> see on, you read the sun? Uh, it, somebody left it in the office. <laughs> and uh, I saw you, with fully clothed, I should say. And uh, I saw you there. I, it, I mean, people walk down the street uh -huh. and they must point and, you know, know that it's yeah. Sean, isn't it? Do you like that or is that something you just get used to? No, I don't particularly like that at all. The, the worst thing is when you go shopping to Marks and Socks and everyone looks in your trolley to see what you've bought. <laughs> Um, no, I'm, that aspect of it, although I'm fairly sociable, fairly good guys. I like meeting people, but... And how long can it last? How long will you be in this job before you move? Um, well, I don't know. I find that you reach a stage whereby that's in the hands of other people, not in yeah, my hands. Yeah. Depends what choices other people will make on my behalf, Great. I think. Well, I'm, I'm glad people maybe have got a chance to, to know this much more to you underneath than maybe they just see on the television. <laughs> Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, Sean Lloyd. <laughs> flying the flag for Wales on television. Well, a gentleman who's flying the flag for Wales in the music business is a lad called Martin Joseph. His first single was a top 40 hit, 
called Dolphins Made Me Cry. He's uh, at the moment recording his new album, but he's here tonight singing live. Will you please welcome Mr. Martin Joseph? I could start with the pimps and the bullies and those out of tune. Move on to dictators and waiters on people's misfortune. Deal with the pride of the many who won't help the few. And to reel off the names of my heroes and find one for you. Demons and diamonds and lovers of gold. Those who stay warm or some freeze in the cold. Here I stand, aware of the condition of my heart. Here I stand, I'm aware of the condition of my heart. I could talk of another world waiting the new world to come. Reel up the things I deem worthy, yeah, one by one by one by one by one. Tell you the reason it's happening, yeah, I'll tell you why. As I make up my donations, I forget to cry. We got lipstick and glass to cover the scars And I've heard that there's folks who trust in the stars Here I stand, who wear the condition of my heart Here I stand, I'm aware of the condition of my heart And it's funny, the older we get The more we keep asking And maybe to never stop asking is part of the plan and here I am, here I am, here I stand oh. Oh, na, na, na. I could talk of the racketeer hoodlums and prayers on fear Those who strip men of their dignity and turn around and sneer couldn't give a damn those who have prejudice deep in their veins and their hearts. Those who detonate charges to blow folk apart. Real big, brave men. You know, there's none that's so blind as they that can't see. And right now that finger is pointing at me. Here I stand, I'm aware of the condition of my heart. Here I stand, I'm aware of the condition of my heart, my heart. Here I stand, I'm aware of the contradictions, the conflictions within my heart. Here I stand, I'm aware of the condition of my heart. Commanding, aren't you, when you get your guitar out? You think so, mate? Yeah, it's, it's funny because I was, I was reading about Bruce Springsteen and people were saying when they were trying to get him started, <laughs> go and see him, go and see him play live. And it's very much like that with you, isn't it? Because when people see you playing and singing just on your own, don't have to have a band, right. they get the full picture. And that's their experience. I guess so. I've always had a problem kind of putting down what I did live when it came to making records. I always felt the records were slightly disappointing. So apparently something happens live that I'm not really worried. Maybe it's just a freeing up and there's nothing like playing to a live audience to get that feeling. But you have to learn your trade as well, and you've been doing this a long, long time. Long time, long time. I mean, from church halls up to concert halls all over the country, mm -hmm. and you build up your audience, they come with you. They have. They've been very kind, most of them anyway. A few have dropped by and sort of uh, uh, probably been dead and buried. <laughs> but um, they've been very kind. I mean, I, I have played lots of places, and even recently sort of playing some huge places with... Uh, some with people like... Go on, go on, name no, one. no, I don't want to. But, uh, I'll say it. Christopher? Yeah, him. Um, Beverly we were, Craig? Yeah, we were, we were playing like, it was caught 18,000 seater and I'd, I'd walk on with the, the piece of wood and, and, it, and it worked. I mean, I think people in those shows are aware that something grand is going to happen and, and if you can just go out with a guitar and, and just win them over, then it, 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 it looks good. Yeah. It's a bit of a start of the Martin Joseph weekend on HTV, isn't it? <laughs> There's another program coming up on, well, uh, on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. That's right, they followed me around for about uh, a month or so, this great early cameraman and friendly people, and captured a, a little Well, piece let's there. have a little look at something okay. now. Yeah. We believe that the songs that Martin writes and uh, 
uh, the way that he touches people with his music is, is very important and, and it's something that we want to be a part of and we think we'll be successful and we can make money out of it. I would not give up on anyone except maybe I still hold on to a dream for you I would like to, to see you turn around and find it deep must be rough now with all the bitterness washing over me. People say to me, what are your ambitions? What's well, to do a good, bad, and a good husband? That's the hardest thing. It's easy to make records. You know, anyone can go in a garage these days and make a dance record that goes into the top ten with enough money spent on it. It's a lot harder to spend time with your kids and make sure you're you know, doing the right thing. So, uh, you know, those, those are the tough things in life. Looks like they went to a model agency to get your wife and your oh, children. They are. I don't know who that woman is, actually. I've never seen her in my life. No. <laughs> it's the swan. No, yeah. We must be about the same age, and I suppose we're going through the same sort of things, having families and having children. It, it's a bit unfashionable. I've got a bit more hair than you have, <laughs> Thank you. It takes 20 minutes to make up the top and about five minutes for the rest. Um, so it's, you're not fashionable, are you? You're fighting against the time. <laughs> no, I don't say the clothes are going out. Sorry, my own back. No, but musically, no. you know, this, you know, you're not singing rap, as a man said. You're not singing rap. You're not singing no. uh, dance it's, music. It's it's tough right now for singer songwriters, for folks who, who strum guitars. I mean, the the uh, the computer to some extent has taken over. But I, I think that um, even what the the Go West guys were saying is getting back to writing stuff on instruments. You know, and um, I don't know. I, I sometimes feel without wanting to patronise, a little sorry for this generation who. You know, in, who grow up with, with songs in the charts about maybe girls just want to have fun or whatever. But in, in, you know, 20 years ago, that stuff would have been laughed out of the place where people were looking for some sort of meaning and some sort of real issues taken care of. And we need, you know, music is entertainment, of course, and we need that. But I, I can't really do that. I have to write stuff that, that means something to me. And, um, you know, it, it's popular to sing songs about um, issues and stuff when things are going well. But right now, you know, we're in the Depression, a lot of people are going through a lot of tough times and it's really even more unfashionable to tell them because they know already you know yeah. so it's it's uh, it's tricky but it's what i do and um i still think there's a place for it because the, the nice thing i think is that you, you haven't forgotten your roots i mean there's no reason why there shouldn't be people to come out of this part of the world and okay. write about their home area not write about sacramento or san francisco but right. to write about cardiff yeah. i know that's that's happening now isn't it you're writing yeah. songs about cardiff bay and about here rather that's than right. anywhere else I think, you know, when, you, when I stood, first started writing songs when I was 16 years old, you don't necessarily care too much about where you come from. It's important, but it's not the biggest thing in your life. And then when you get a little bit older, 30, you know, um, you, 30, you, 30, you know, yeah. uh, you begin to suddenly look around <clears throat> and you want to know your roots because you begin to have to pass things on to others, your kids and stuff, and you want to have some sort of foundation, some place where you can look to and say, that's where I'm from. And I've really begun to look around me and, and some of that's been reflected in some of the writing. Because a lot of the people you must meet, can't be as together as you can with families and kids and all that. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd be a bit judgmental on my part and say I was together. I'm doing my best. I mean, I, I think uh, without, you know, you mustn't be judgmental. I think it's, it's a place to have compassion and understanding. It's a real tricky time in society right now to keep families together. Yeah. And there's no, um, you know, there are no easy solutions. So, so um, I'm doing my best, but, you know, you have to have compassion for people. Finish the album before Christmas? Sing it in January? Day. Yep. Great. Martin Joseph! Great! Thank you. Yes, yes. Time for us to take another break now. We'll be back with Beverly Craven and Andy Shepard. See you in a couple of minutes.